In this episode of Travel Log, we take you to Xiaoguang of Guangdong Province. Misty Grand Mountains, lush green vegetation, and clear skies greet you on arrival. Marvel at Danxia Mountains, red terrestrial sandstone, where layers of auburn shimmer. Visit the festive Yao as they celebrate with a song and dance. So come along to Xiaoguan. Check out the scenery here. It's so picturesque. Behind me, misty grand mountains, lush vegetation, clear skies, and you know what? The air here is so fresh. Who would have thought a place with such amazing scenery also had a long and interesting history and culture? Well, that's why we're in Xiaoguan today. I'm Yin, and welcome to Travelog. Xiaoguan in northern Guangdong Province is a city with captivating natural scenery. In particular, there's the landscape of Danxia Mountain, which will immerse you in a world of green. Trees, plants, and hilly mountains off in the distance. However, that's not all it has to offer. The area is covered with rivers, waterfalls, and also canyons. The land is full of life. If you come to Xiaoguan, you must stay at least for a few days, simply to take in some fresh air, cleanse the spirit, and admire both the grandeur and delicacy of Mother Nature. Here, you'll be welcomed by the most exotic plants, insects, and people. The local Yao minority have been living in the mountains for ages. Still, the main attraction here is the famous Danxia Mountain, known as the Redstone Park in China. It's a one-hour drive from Xiaoguan City in the northeastern suburbs. The red rocks and red cliffs of strange shapes and sizes seem to be the work of a skilled sculptor. It's hard to imagine that they actually come from the mysterious hand of nature. The Danxia Mountains are particularly famous because of the red color of the rocks. And you see, even from the two characters, Dan and Xia, you get that hint. Dan literally means uh, a dark red, and Xia is the brightening of the clouds. So off in the distance, you can see the striking resemblance. The mountains look like clouds floating in the air. The Danxia Mountains' red terrestrial sandstone has given rise to the name Danxia Landform. In fact, there are over 1,000 places in the world with a Danxia Landform, but Danxia Mountain is the largest and most characteristic of them. The layers and layers of red under the rays of sunlight particularly exaggerate its unique structure and beauty. You need to explore the mountain for at least two days. On my first day, I couldn't wait to get on a boat and get a complete view. And this boat will take you to all the right places. Now a boat ride to get a closer look at the mountain. A boat ride is a popular means of touring the area. The Jinjiang River, as it gently flows around Danxia Mountain, reflects the images of the beautiful peaks in its clear waters. These rocks are subject to weathering and erosion, which can create unusual shapes on the landscape. If you use your imagination, the rocks are suddenly teapots, pencils, or ancient instruments, maybe. For millions of years, these rocks have changed, and to this day, they're still being transformed. 
Well, my first day in the waters was quite spectacular. And tomorrow, I'll climb the mountain and experience it up close. Can't wait. It's 5 a.m. right now, and I'm ready to see the sun rise up on the mountains. The view is supposed to be spectacular, but you know, right now, the moon is still out. Soon to be. Goodbye, moon, and hello, sunshine. It's really early in the morning, and I don't feel completely awake yet, but I've managed to drag my body up the slopes to see the sunrise. Luckily, the cable cars start up early, so I can get to the top very conveniently, although you still have to do a bit of climbing afterwards to reach the peak. In the morning, all you can hear are the sounds of your own footsteps and the birds chirping in the distance. To catch the sunrise, you can stay at one of the hotels at the foot of the mountain. However, some people choose to camp out all night on the mountain to catch the earliest rays of light. And when the sun does rise, it's utterly compelling. It's the beginning of a brand new day, and I went to see the most iconic structure at Danxia Mountain. It's this natural formation that draws hordes of people. I wasn't going to miss out either. Ah, can you guess what that is? Well, I think that you're thinking exactly what I'm thinking. You see, because of the natural shape of this rock, people have called it the male rock and made many symbols out of this. You see, male means yang in Chinese, part of yin and yang. Yang is male, and yin is female. And as with everything else in nature, there's a balance in everything. There's yin and yang, male and female. There's hardness and softness, and there's also big and small. This is an example. The mountain's real claim to fame is this rare geological formation. And its shape really does resemble a male sex organ. Although many mountains have this shape, what's unique is the corresponding female stone. Many people see these structures as sacred, and they come here to wish for love, happy marriage, and fertility. Xiaoguan organizes international group weddings with dozens of couples at the foot of this mountain. As it's believed that the symbolic male and female structures will bring a certain balance in a relationship, as well as long-lasting love. Who knows what particular power this mountain has? But just the scenery itself is captivating enough. Today, it's all about climbing. It's quite a strenuous task, so please bring a good pair of hiking boots. Wow. Look at that red rock over there. The male rock mountain has the most typical characteristics of a Danxia landform, with stone steps, walls, pillars, and bridges. The climb up the mountain is steep, and the path is relatively dangerous, with twists and turns. So, if you're a thrill seeker, this is the path for you. Otherwise, if you're afraid of heights. Don't come here. Hey, I'm up here. You see, I'm already halfway up the mountain, but the background here—that is a sight to see. Only gonna get better up there. I soon found out that I was far from halfway up, but with each step, I got a more spectacular view. Danxia Mountain is filled with scenic wonders. Up here, we have an ancient mountain valley. Among them, Ximejai stands out. It was built in the Ming Dynasty. Now, I can't imagine how people used to live here in the old days. Even today, with the railings and long steps, climbing up and down is really scary. 
At times, it feels like I'm going up at almost 75 degrees. It seems like I've reached the entrance to the village, and you see the gate? It's not as grand as you might have expected. Well, it's because it's practical like this. Think about it. All it took was one villager to stand in the entrance and keep intruders from coming in. So, be firm. Neat. You see, the local villagers used to use the natural resources here and incorporate them into all aspects of their lives. For instance, you can see the rocks here used to serve as their homes. And over here, you have the village walls. Now, although no one lives here today, these serve as a pretty good reminder of the past. Besides walls and gate remains, we can't find many remnants left of the villagers' existence. However, they weren't the only ones who adapted to life on the top of this mountain, as there were many of these mountain villages scattered here and there. I'm really a pretty unmotivated person when it comes to mountain climbing, particularly in the mid-August heat. But the locals tell me that climbing Danxia Mountain is one of the most painfully refreshing experiences. And they were absolutely right. After a grueling an hour and a half of climbing, we finally reached the mountaintop. From here, the lush green evergreen forest and beautiful Jinjiang River paint a captivating picture. Well, we finally passed that cliff over there. It's like 90 degrees. Not for the people who are sissies, but for me, and for all those out there who are brave enough to endure this, be sure to bring a good pair of sneakers and maybe a hat for some protection from the sun. Luckily today we have all these trees and foliage to protect us and to keep this place relatively cool. Danxia Mountain possesses everything you'd expect from a famous mountain. It's grand. Its rocks are strangely formed, the path upwards is dangerous, and the scenery is charming. Climbing up the mountain, you'll see all sorts of plants and rock formations. It's quite a work of nature. Let me tell you, this is like a natural air conditioning system. This cave here, this position and its depth all provide the coolness in here. And you see the drops of spring water that sort of drizzle down. Valleys, caves, waterfalls, and canyons, they are all here. Shaoguan Danxia Mountain is popular among scientists, too, as a place they can study tectonic movements, force actions, the natural environment, and ecological evolution. As we go further, we pass a unique spot known as a shot of sky. After a winding path on the mountain valley, we get to this secluded, quiet place. A shot of sky is about 200 meters long, 40 meters tall, and a mere one meter wide. From this view, you can only see one slither of the sky from among the deep rocks. It's easy to get lost in the mountains, but even then, that's an experience. You never know what you're going to find out in this mysterious environment. Try visiting at different times of day and in different types of weather. You can't imagine the changing aura. Magnificence, seclusion, grandeur, 
and the serenity of the mountain. On the boat yesterday, we saw temples high above the mountains, so I decided to pay a visit to one of them, a Buddhist nunnery, in fact, Lingxian. The environment here is spectacular. The temple appears to be hanging over a river in an enormous cave. Back in the early 11th century, monks discovered the strange rock caves and were amazed by their beauty. The monks then soon built temples and brought religious items here. I think I know finally why they decided to build this Buddhist nunnery above the mountains and alongside the waters and the rocks. Well, think about it. It's so quiet. All you hear are the sounds of birds chanting. The perfect place for these women to relax and think deeply about the sutras. In 1981, the nunnery was renovated, and now plenty of people climb up here to pray, while visitors come just to look. Buddhism is quite alien to me, but the aura here is infectious. Resting high above the world, it's easy to forget about all those worldly affairs. Instead, you find yourself just focusing on the inner spirit. Danxia Mountain is one of those things that you see and wonder, how on earth? Next, we head to Luchan County, 54 kilometers north of Shaoguan City. Luchan has long been known as a county with a wealth of vegetation. In the landscape. Everything is carpeted with a blanket of green, and even the waters reflect the same hue. Our first stop is Longwangtan, which is 23 kilometers from central Luchang. Here, lakes, mountains, and hot springs make it a rarity in Guangdong Province. You'll find plants and insects that you've never seen before. That layers and layers of different vegetation, and who knows what kinds of animal species are tucked away underneath the trees. And from the tops of the mountains, you can see the water just rushing down under the rocks. Just listen to that sound, and you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't need to say anymore. The area is rich in water, and besides the waterfalls, there are entertainment activities, just like drifting. Luchang is the most famous place in China for drifting. You need to get a few people together in order to get a boat, and the price goes down to around 150 per person. It's three to four hours of excitement. Our next stop here is Buddha Rock. It is an ancient, large-scale limestone cave with stalactites and stalagmites formed naturally. Inside the cool underground cave, the temperatures range around 19 to 20 degrees Celsius year-round. If you didn't know better, you might think you were back in the land of the dinosaurs, or rather, maybe an underground palace or a dungeon, because it is actually very cold in here. And what's amazing is, if you look around, you'll see the drops of water that are dripping down because of the cold temperature. And now these rocks are not your typical rocks. They've been around for over hundreds of thousands of years, and in that time have taken some unique and strange shapes. What shapes exactly are they? Well, everyone has a different opinion. The cave is in the west of Luchang County, five kilometers away from the center, and 54 kilometers away from the urban area of Shaoguan. The cave is filled with what seems to be stone flowers, stone posts, curtains, and a variety of Buddhism-related formations. What does this look like to you? Well, under the lighting here, this structure is a moon hanging over the mountains. We 
we've seen so much diversity of the natural environment, so now we'll change things and experience the lives of the different people here. 56 kilometers southwest of Shaoguan City in the Ruyuan Yao Autonomous County is Bibei Yao Village. Here we can truly appreciate their folk customs and culture. After two hours of crispy mountain paths, we finally reached the Yao Village, and I hope they're ready for some visitors. The Yao are a festive people, and they're so hospitable that our arrival meant a warm welcome. Oh, okay, well, we're greeted with a token of, I guess, a welcome and a big bowl of alcohol. You don't have much choice here, so here's the Yao village. Everyone is handed a big bowl before entering the village. And although they won't make you drink if you refuse, it's really just the local custom that you do. And they will be very delighted. No surprise, lifestyles here are very different. The mountain is their home, and the surrounding environment provides them with everything they need. You see, these local buildings here, and the people, the villagers, the chickens and hens running around, little children here and there, they sort of remind you of the traditional type of lifestyle here, high above in the mountains. People use the natural resources to build their homes, and also a unique way of life. People here still preserve elements of their traditional lifestyle. Just look at these women's clothing, and you know that they are masters of embroidery. All their clothing are handmade, and their delicate designs can be purchased today by tours. But the prices aren't cheap. So what are these men doing? Nowadays, dances are performed at festivals and also on special days to welcome guests into their village. The dance is an encyclopedia of the people's history as it tells some sort of story about their past. Or rather, it's a religious ritual. Now we head north for two hours to the Guangdong Grand Canyon in Dabu Town. It's the most awe-inspiring sight I've ever seen. The canyon is 15 kilometers long, or 300 meters deep, and 200 to 300 meters wide. The surrounding area is fertile and rich with wildlife. Unfortunately, it was raining the day I went, and we did try to go down to the canyon, but we realized that it was really impossible, especially with our equipment. If you thought flying an airplane was the only way to go through the clouds, take a look over here. It seems like after the rain, the mist sort of just flows up and builds up into a big puff of smoke almost. It's like we're roaming through the skies. Also poetic in nature. From far away, it looks like a huge ditch. But after getting close, you realize how mind-boggling the canyon actually is. Its sides cut deep down and the water crashes. Any words I can use to describe it seem infinitely dull in comparison to this magnificent sight. For only 35 yuan, it's a pretty spectacular thing. If you want to explore the entire canyon, it will take around three days. But for a quick view, a few hours will be enough to go up and down. Green, carefree, vivacious can all be used to describe this city. Come to Xiaoguan to see the world in its most pristine state and leave feeling satisfied and more complete.
You see, it doesn't matter whether it's a sunny day or there's drizzling rain. Shaoguan is a place that never ceases to captivate us. And all it takes are a few days here, and you'll know what it really means to be relaxed and at ease with nature. But that's all for me to say and for you to find out. So I'm Yin, and see you in Shaoguan.